from the KATC Weatherland. Here's Rob's forecast. Welcome back. Well, a busy, stormy day across Acadiana, but things have certainly quieted down, but not after several rounds of severe weather. Just about every parish in Acadiana under severe thunderstorm warnings, even though we didn't have a severe thunderstorm watch, it sometimes happens that way. So let's take a look at the big picture, and we look at the water vapor imagery, and if you were watching us last night at 10, we were talking about a disturbance that was by the Oklahoma-Texas Panhandle, southern Kansas. Well, that worked its way around the periphery of this ridge of high pressure manifested in strong showers and storms and that's what we saw today and that's why we were concerned of also the possibility of damaging winds and that came to fruition as well now, on a widespread basis much more so uh, than some of the storms we saw last night and the next impulse by the way eastern Oklahoma western Arkansas that's going to get here by tomorrow morning so showers few storms but to a much lesser degree on their intensity as we head into tomorrow morning you can see how the storms really blossom out now the bulk of the activity moving out way out into the Gulf of Mexico. So let's back it up six hours. You'll see the showers and storm storms dropping southward. A lot of clouds around lightning and on top of that damaging winds across the region. So it was an impressive line of showers and storms. Much needed rainfall, mind you. In Jeff Davis Parish, the winds out ahead of the storms produced a major dust storm. So it was very dusty. I have some videos and pictures on my uh, Facebook page and Twitter pages. You want to check that out as well and you can see how the storms continue to cause problems as they move to the south now quieting down but we do have a lingering shower or two uh, right by the sunset Karen Crow area so we'll keep uh, some rain chances early this evening and a few more showers up here towards central and northern Louisiana we'll see if these make it all the way down to our part of the world they should fall apart before they get here so it should be quieter for the rest of the night here are all the storm reports on damaging winds and there's probably two to three times the amount of the official storm reports. This is just what the National Weather Service gets, and we plot it up here for you. But uh, all the damage, uh, mostly wind damage. We did have some small hail out there, but it was mostly wind. If you were watching us live on the air around 2 o'clock this afternoon, we were updating you on uh, just that. And here's good news, too. The rainfall, not as much as we'd like in the fire areas, but at least some precipitation. And you get into the shades of green. You're pushing 2 to 3 inches of rain. This is over the last 24 hours. This is last night's rain and today's rain so much needed rainfall to help put a slight dent in the exceptional drought that we're in. So here's the infrared satellite imagery looking impressive here. That's our next disturbance coming up, but we opened it up into the tropics, Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean quiet. We do have tropical storm Margo out here in the Atlantic, not particularly organized. And then of course, Hurricane Lee look Lee looking much different and surprisingly so as it's encountered some dry air that we were not anticipating. So that's leveled off the storm to a cat four and it's going to be interacting with this drier air for a day or two. So we don't think Lee, if anything, Lee is going to weaken a little bit more, but then may gain more intensity still a very powerful category for hurricane 150 mile per hour winds maxed out at about 165 last night early this morning still moving along to the west northwest the pressures come up a bit as well uh, national hurricane center maintaining this system as a category four storm it will weaken a little bit and then you can see their forecasting maybe a little strengthening and then maybe down to a three perhaps but the bottom line uh, we'll be watching this storm for seven to ten days because it won't be affecting any land masses anytime soon, but then as we extrapolate the spaghetti models, it does look like there's uh, plenty of room for concern between Bermuda and maybe the Northeast U.S., uh, certainly New England, Nova Scotia, and perhaps Newfoundland as well. So we'll watch it for them. No threats to the Gulf of Mexico for the next two weeks. Love to say that on September 8th. We hope that we can continue to say that in the weeks ahead. Now here we go into tomorrow. There will be a scattering of showers and some storms. Uh, the earlier run was showing more activity this run a little bit less but the bottom line 60% early tomorrow morning lingering clouds into the afternoon but the sun comes back out and the question is if the sun comes back out will we hit 90 degrees maybe and then feeling much better Sunday morning
morning. Mid to upper 60s for Acadiana. 73, not bad for tonight. 40% chance on those rain chances, at least uh, early. And then maybe some action coming in right around daybreak tomorrow. And we see that with our true view sky. So could be a little bit of a stormy start to the day or rainy gray start. But by the afternoon, we do expect the skies to clear out and things to quiet down. We'll say 90 for the high. But it may not hit 90. We'll see. Uh, we haven't been below 90 degrees since one day in June on June 6. Here's your temperatures as we move forward. Temperatures low to mid 90s for highs, but comfortable humidity and those lows mid to upper 60s to lower 70s. And the bulk of the 10 day forecast is looking like something we should have seen in June, July or yeah. August, but we're getting it here in September. It's the best forecast you've had in months. Thank you. I'll give you that. I worked right. hard on it. Very good. Thanks, Rob. <laughs>